are Locked On Cowboys, your Locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Locked Network, your on. team every Locked day. On. Locked, 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 Locked On. Locked On. Cowboys. Locked On Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for tuning in. I am your host, Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. And joining me today, as always, is Landon McCool. You can check him out on Twitter at McCoolBCB. You can also listen to him on the Best Coast Boys podcast. Landon, I have a confession to make. Um, I never had Whataburger before. Is it is it good? Is it worth the hype? It's the greatest thing ever devised okay. by man. Well, I mean, um, according to Jerry Jones, that's true, right? A, a Jerry Jones honestly was underselling Whataburger, and I'm a little upset about, about it, but uh, it, it is by far the, the greatest hamburger fast food burger on the planet but we don't we don't want to bore people with that because we we've got more more important more exciting things to talk about we do like uh like yeah oh yeah mike mccarthy's shirt in that meeting i thought was uh <laughs> was the height of fashion uh that and somebody was wearing crocs uh, i they yeah, didn't identify which crocs. player it was uh <laughs> but i did see some crocs um all right landon so we're gonna break down episode four of hard knocks uh from hbo Featuring the Dallas Cowboys, and boy, what a jam-packed episode this was. Uh, I'm being a little facetious here. So, a little bit. Uh, biggest takeaway from this episode? Well, honestly, the biggest takeaway I, I thought was that uh, we were going to get some some uh, uh, footage finally of Dak throwing the football a little nope. bit. We didn't get any of it. <laughs> so I thought that was a little weird. Uh, um, I, my biggest takeaway is that, you know, it's it was interesting to kind of see the down roster guys go through this whole process, mm-hmm. though, um, you know, they acted unaffected by it completely. It was just, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of I guess at this point now it's more there hasn't been like such an exciting storyline to pop out. I mean, the uh, Isaac stuff is really interesting. The, the Kamara stuff is, is fascinating with this, with their families and, and, and their is involvement. Ka- the there. Kamara thing more interesting now that he made the 53 man roster. It certainly is. I mean, I guess we're going to kind of see some of that stuff, you know, play out next week, I would assume. Right. So that's always fascinating. I mean, the cut down episode is always a lot more drama and fascinating, but, yeah, I mean, really, it's like you're going to see Ben get cut. You're, I mean, but Kamar made the team, and 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 Isaac, you know, technically didn't. I mean, he didn't make the team, but he's part of the roster exemption, so he's part of the team. Yeah. yeah. Um. So it's the, a lot of the drama sucked out of out of that out of that whole situation. I don't know. I, I thought it was there's there's lots of individual things that were you know individually interesting, and I think that that's been the case this whole season, right? It's like it's not so much that there's been very interesting storylines or. Uh, you know, an overarching theme that's that's really fascinating. It's more just you know a thing here or there that's kind of oh, that's interesting. All right, yeah, it's it's one of those episodes. There's not a lot to take away, but we're gonna do our best to stretch yes. some some takeaways. First and foremost, for me, Dak Prescott, the trash talker, very very Man. impressed. Right, like he even got Amari Cooper to trash talk, which is pretty hard to do. So I, I thought I was impressed. He got caught. I mean, Amari had to apologize at the end of it. He got so caught up with Dak. He's like, he's like, man, I'm sorry I did that to you, 27. I, 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 uh, Dak got me all riled up. I didn't know what happened. It's like, that, Dak's that guy that like convinces a whole group of people to do, to like, you know, a group of guys to do something absolutely insane and like, you know, let's go to Vegas. You know, like he's yeah. he, he's he's the guy who will convince you to to run through a wall with him. Apparently, well, yeah, I, it was really good. Prescott or Pylon Prescott? Prescott Pylon, Pylon. Prescott. Yes, no. I, I'm buying that game when it comes out. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I like how Jack you... said, we're all going to be millionaires. I think he kind of caught himself like, wait, I, I, I already am. <laughs> yeah, whoops, oops. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I mean, frankly, uh, you know, like at least two, 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 uh, one other person, maybe two are in that room are probably millionaires too. So, yeah. Uh, that, yeah. I thought that was funny. All right. Some other winners from Michelle Lane. Who do you got? Well, I mean, I don't know if a winner, but it, I guess it was interesting that to to uh, well, let's let's do talk about what it. Let's talk about Aiden Dirty, uh, the, the, the 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 defensive line he's coach. For, I mean, it's just hilarious. It's just fun to watch him. And and honestly, I thought at the beginning of the episode, you know, everybody was complaining about the heat and all that, and and and, and you know, look, I mean. It's, it is hot, and when you're especially, I remember what it was like to wear pads in in, in Texas d- during this time of year. It was terrible, and uh, and and but he, I, I thought it was really fascinating the way he, you know he kind of stopped everything. Was like, look, 
you guys can complain about this, whatever. These may be for some people, this will be their last few days of mm-hmm. playing football. And and I think that that's something that like more than any other sport, you know, that that is like it's such a harsh reality about this sport. I mean, more than basketball, you can always play some, you know, advanced league basketball game. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you can you can play, probably play in some softball league if you love that. If you're, you know, a golfer, you can play that forever. If you're a football player and you love to play the sport mm-hmm. in football that- in, in, in the way that it's attended, you know, like with, with full, you know, tackle and with a team, like this is a, this, you know, the opportunity runs out quick. And, and for these guys, it's, it's, I think that part's fascinating. So the, the, him pulling everybody aside and kind of reminding everybody, hey, uh, uh, Sunday may be some of the people that are on this field's last turn, last time to play football. So let's, let's honor that by, it was good, some work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to go back to the heat really quickly. And I, I got yeah. a question, like a legitimate question for you. Yeah. Okay. It's like 110 degrees out there in Dallas, and yet people are wearing hoodies on the field. Like, explain yeah. that to me. Well, that, I mean, that's a, that's a you know that's a that's a football player thing. I mean, that's that's a you know. But it's not the even old, football players. The coaches are wearing hoodies on the field. It's Why? the old, it's the old wear the trash uh, the trash bag under your your. Yeah, but if you're a coach, why, why do you care? <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, I, it's still it's. I'm not I'm not condoning it. I'm just telling you what the thing is, and I don't. It's a toughness thing, I guess. I don't know. Like, I don't get it. Okay. I mean, Zeke wears it every day. Like, so it's like, what, I mean, I, he's just trying to lose weight. And, and according to you, he he, need, he needs to. So uh, uh, maybe that's what. Uh, Speaking well, of losing well, weight, like, we, we got to talk about Jaquan and his yams. Uh, and, and, I was and just how, about to mention that. Uh, another thing I've never had before, I've never had yams. Oh, man, really? Yeah. Man. Yams are good. But I, really I don't know that North, they made it. Northern thing. Yeah, I guess that's fair. But, but I. I I, they certainly didn't make Jaquan a lot faster. I'll say that. Um, I honestly, I think or I wanted taller. to go. Yeah, we're taller. I, I, I honestly, I think I wanted to go to the Parsons family. Uh, yeah, kick out there. That looked legit. Well, that's mac and cheese again. And the, yeah. Parsons are from PA, where real food is made. There, Landon, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's something like that. Uh, yeah. I, I also thought it was funny in that that section too, watching him play Connect Four with Leighton with, Vanderesh. Yeah. He. he loves the you know the chess game the mental aspect of all of it you know like and not only just competitive but like yeah. the like the the tricky you know yeah. like being four steps ahead kind of mental aspect of it, that i really love that that side of his personality he's, he's a fascinating kid he is he's, he, he's very uh cerebral cerebral a, a little bit like um Amari Cooper that way, right? Yeah. I think he's a little yeah. more outgoing. In he's more outgoing, and... but he has that side to him for sure. Yes. And I can yes. see why they get, I, I was, you know, it's funny when we heard that they were playing chess because it was like, those two guys seem like a, a very odd yeah, couple. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but like now that you've seen a little bit more, I totally get it. Like I totally yeah. don't see how he could get along with that type of personality. All right, let's take a quick break so I can tell you guys about bet online. It's the fastest and easiest way to place all of your football bets BetOnline is your number one spot for all the pro and college action this season. All you have to do is head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today, and you will receive a 100% welcome bonus from football, basketball, boxing, baseball, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait and take advantage of the all, all of the great offers that BetOnline has to offer. BetOnline, your online sportsbook experts. All right, let's get to some more uh, notes from th- this great episode of Hard Knocks. Uh, Rico Daddle, uh, we kind of mm. talked about him a couple days ago. Like maybe this is a fake – I don't want to use the word fake injury. Maybe it's not a long-term injury that really needed to p- have him go on the season-long injured reserve list. But now that we got some info that it was a hip and it was kind of affecting his whole body, I think maybe that – it makes more sense, right? We got some background to it. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely interesting to get context there, right? Like, it, you know, see it kind of, you know, the play that it, it started on. I don't know that I necessarily noticed that when it happened live. Um, well, at least or, it's a fractured hip. Yeah, no, I mean, that's what's fascinating. And, yeah. and so, like, to see the play in the game and then to see him, like, actually dressed out at practice the next mm-hmm. day and, like, you know, trying to work through it and then realizing, yeah, something's not right. Yeah, the, something that's not right is that your hip is fractured. Yeah, it's like, yeah, oh, yeah. you just figure that out. And that just shows you kind of like what these guys deal with, you know, day to day. It's like 
uh, you know, the bumps and bruises they have to push through to try to like fight for their job. So he barely noticed that he had a, a fractured hip and that uh, he had to be pulled out. And obviously he's going to be out for months now. So uh, I did think that was interesting. Yeah. The, the way that kind of unfolded, and we got to see behind the curtain a little so bit there. We got to see the Cowboys running back coach tell basically Jay, Jay Quan Hardy that, Hey, this is your job now that Dowdle's gone. Did you believe that or no? I don't know that that's the. I think what he was trying to say is that this is your opportunity to yeah, to you know to ha- take this job, like you know, and that he 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 used the example that I thought was pretty interesting of the uh, of the Gatorade bottle, and it's like here it is, it's like right here, you gotta you mm-hmm. know grab it, you gotta take the opportunity. I you know, I think it's funny because one of the things that was funny about this is that they 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 edited it and everything like to set him up to. You know, for a Have glorious a kind of grab for grab for, and that it just didn't materialize like that no. in the game. I mean, I thought his he had kind of a mediocre game, and 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 really, you know, kind of was like indecisive at points where he needed to be decisive. So it, it was it was almost like it almost felt like they were trying to lead us into something where, you know, he had this great game and he took the job, and you know, that's not exactly what how it turned no. out. No, I mean. And we're, again, we're recording this on, what was it, Tuesday night? Who knows if he even makes a practice squad, right? Like, that's yeah. certainly still up for grabs. Like, the Cowboys could easily just sign a running back to their 53 main roster and be like, you know what? We're good with Hardy. We, we've seen enough. We don't think he's ever got what it takes to be a, you know, not even a starting caliber player, but a functional player in the NFL. Let's grab somebody else and try it out. So, if, um, I mean, if Zeke gets a vote, then obviously he's going to make it in because apparently Zeke well, was pretty impressive. We should talk sure. about Zeke. Um, he's crazy man i just i love that dude i, I know I, I mean i just think he's just he's just nuts like i i he's just that that ball of energy on the sideline like just i don't know he's just going around hyping everybody up i, I, I like i like i like the way I, he is he is a clown but that's the, not the negative connotation of a yeah. clown right like he's yeah. just he's silly he's goofy yeah. he's funny and i think players just kind of like his attitude right it's, it's mm-hmm. pretty infectious um yeah. Somebody who uh, probably thinks they're funnier than they are. Uh, oh, Terrell man. Batchum, right? Yeah. Uh, what, what was your you thoughts know, on his first stand-up comic bit? You know, here's the thing between being – the difference between being, like, a comedian and, like, being, like, the funny guy in your friend group, right? Yeah, yeah, Is that, yeah. like, you know, you do imitations of the people that you all know. Like, that was the funniest thing he was doing was that, like – Like the DeMarcus hey, Lawrence one was Hey, good. do you guys yeah. know DeMarcus Lawrence? I think he – if he was on an airplane, it'd be like this, you know? It was, yeah, yeah. It, it, and it was – but ultimately, even then, it was just him telling stories of stuff that happened to them. So it's – it's it, it's it was sorry, funny Bashi. because – <laughs> yeah, I, we love you, Bashy. Seriously, I, I I love the effort. I do think you're funny. You seem like a funny guy. It's just, but it's funny because, you know, when you're when you play for the Dallas Cowboys, you have kind of this weird level of access to stuff, and you can set up a comedy club and go do 15 minutes of you doing inside jokes for the 25 other people who yeah. all get the, your joke. Yeah. You know, it was it was fun. I'm glad that they they get to go do stuff like that and you know get to go, you know, have it's it's good team building to hang out with each other mm-hmm. and stuff and especially to like, you know, it's good to blow off steam and make fun of the coach sure. and sure. all that stuff. I, so it was but yeah, I mean it's I don't know that don't quit your day job, Bash. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's 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 keep working on that swim move. It's, yes, and, exactly. Not so much the comic. Uh, any other takeaways from Hard Knocks? I want to get into some of the roster cuts the Cowboys made on Tuesday just at the end of the show. But any final things you want to mention from this kind of lackluster episode? No, I mean, it, you know, it was that that Eye of the Tiger cover during the game was you didn't like just it? awful. No, I didn't. <laughs> I did not like it. Um, so slow. The Jerry Jones uh, Memorial coin toss. I, I, he's not dead. I shouldn't say Memorial. But <laughs> the, Jerry jo- the Jerry Jones coin toss was pretty funny. Uh, just kind of to see him out. Oh, wow, don't screw this up. And yeah, just, yeah. you know, flinging, his, uh, flinging it. And uh, I, I, the last thing I say is that D Law is, I guess, the Buddha of this team. Uh, I just, uh, how many times did the second chance, the second thought turn out to be a better thought than your first thought? And everyone was just. A couple D-Law, times. I, mean, I don't know. I mean, what? what? I don't know. Uh, I, I, I just love d kind of casually walking into the room as Bash. He's trying to do the joke for a second time in front of everybody. It was so good. That jumpsuit was fire, by the way. It that was. Double, it was very, double swoosh. That was fire. It was very Anyways. Good. Uh, yeah. yeah. So big winner. Mike McCarthy in his outfits. Very, very nice. That's, that shirt. Just <laughs> like my uncle's going to a, a barbecue. 
<laughs> I can't hear you for his shirt. I'm sorry. What'd you say? Actually, it's that's like the the combo shirt. That's I'm going to church first, and then I'm going to the barbecue yeah. after. <laughs> it's very very versatile shirt. Very very especially in Pennsylvania, I imagine. Very yes. Versatile shirt. Well, that's the thing is I've seen that exact shirt like 50 times in the last. You know year. you know where he got that shirt. Oh, I yeah, that's uh that he got that one at TJ Maxx for eleven dollars. So that's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, let's take one more quick break so I can tell you guys about direct. TV. Direct TV is awesome. I use it every single day. They've got this awesome new package called Direct TV Stream, which brings you live TV and on demand favorites together like never before, which means you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. And the best part, there's no annual contract. So stop waiting and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That is directtv.com. I also want to tell you guys about Built Bar just really quick. Built Bar is the absolute best tasting protein bar out there. It's hard to even explain it. Real chocolate with amazing flavors. It's just a great combination of low calories, high protein, and low sugar with no crazy additives. Best of all, they taste absolutely fantastic. Go to BuiltBar.com and use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your next box at BuiltBar.com. All right, Lena, we should talk just really quickly about some of the cuts the Cowboys did make on Tuesday. And I, I really want to stress this is an active, fluid situation, right? There's a Very. lot of guys that got cut today that I would not be surprised end up back on the roster. There's guys that made the roster today that might not be on this team by Wednesday afternoon. So uh, what were some of the big surprises for you on this team? Well, it's hard to say. It's hard to say kind of right now because it's it's not final because of the reasons you just said, right? Like, but I, I would say that I mean, you know, we just said, and if it's if it stands, I, I said what was it last night or two nights ago. These days run together. Kamara, I'm Kamara making the team is mm-hmm. incredible. I mean, it's yeah. it's what a rise for this guy. Um, this I, I thought that- we, we talked about this the other day about trying to stash guys for a day to sneak mm-hmm. them on your practice. That's what this one feels like to me. I don't know. I could be wrong. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Right. Like, and, 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 but I still think the fact that he's gotten this far that they're willing to do that is, is, is something, it, right? It probably you know? means he's one of their top 62 players, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, again, incredible. quite, quite a rise for, from where he yep. was. So um, I, I think, you know, Ralston being gone was, uh, was, you know, not, not exactly ideal. Uh, but but I think that there's other fullbacks out there still. Well, I think I, I think it's another one of those things like the teams that want to have fullbacks on their teams already have them. Yeah, and you can probably cut him and pick him back up once you move, whether it's Chauncey Golston to IR, Neville Gallimore to IR, Sean McHugh into IR. My guess is he's one of those guys that's just gonna have to wait a day. And maybe you find a guy that who's closer to what you had in Alumba. You know, I mean not Alumba. Um, uh, I can't believe I forgot oh, my own so. guy. Aseo, uh, yeah, Oa. So, uh, uh, I think you know you want you would your your ideal situation is a guy who could give you some running back snaps if you need him, who could play fullback, who could also play some special teams. Right. I, I also thought it was interesting that you know all I think all the draft picks are ma- made it right. I think every single one. Yes. Uh, so Farniak was the one that you know obviously was at the bottom of that pile, and I I thought that he had played a really good game, you know, kind of totally at, nice. uh, that last yeah. game and, and the last few actually. Um, so maybe they're going to give him a shot to, you know, maybe again he's a guy that ends up in the practice squad. But I think that they're they're at least willing to hang on to him, and he could be a guy who, if co- they can't get Connor Williams to get better at the snap specifically, maybe he's your backup center plan if something were to go go off the Yadish. Uh, what, what about you? What anything that you saw that was uh... you thought was fascinating? Malik Turner and Semi Fahoku making the team. Now, I, I will preface this by saying CD Lamb and Noah Brown are currently on the COVID list. So that could be just no. a way to continue to practice, right? Because you can't really practice with only three receivers, right? So no. uh, my guess is when the Cowboys open up against Tampa Bay, neither of those guys are on the roster, but we shall see. Mm-hmm. Um, other, I mean, Rondell Carter getting cut, Justin Hamilton getting cut. Yeah. I bet Hamilton will be back. I don't know about Carter, honestly. Uh, you know, Hamilton, I think, is a vet, if I'm not mistaken. So he can just sit a day and come back or whatever. But uh, it's Carter's funny they chose to... Nye over Carter because we've kind of heard some of the opposite, right? Well, I, but I think that they also felt like uh, 
that an eye probably would get. We'll see if Carter gets claimed, but I mean, Anai, Carter got claimed multiple times last year, so it's, yeah, it's that's interesting. True. It will be interesting I to see. I, I I wonder if they have something. I mean, we heard that they may have something in the works for a trade with an eye and or Knight. So it'll it, you know it'll be interesting to see if any of that develops in the next few days. Yeah. So again, this is going to be a pretty fluid thing. Don't expect the team that's on paper now to no. be their fifty three. I, I'm guessing seven or eight moves at least by this weekend would not shock me well, to get some trades. At got, least six to IR, right? I mean, oh, like yeah. I think that's what it is. So, so yeah, we got McEwen, that means- Gallimore. Sounds like Kelvin Joseph might be going to IR as well. Mm-hmm. Chauncey mm-hmm. Golston. Am I missing anybody else? No, actually, Golston actually can't. It turns out uh, that was that that was just uh, confirmed by uh, Todd. See, that uh, one doesn't make sense to me. Why can't he go on IR? Because he's well, it, may, it does. Piece. It does make sense because te- and I and I when I heard it, I was like, well, duh, because because he had to pass a physical to get off of PUP. So in order to pass a physical to, to, to get off of PUP, you can't then turn around and put him on IR. So you know? so that tells me that the Cowboys believe he's going to be ready before week seven of the regular season, right? Because otherwise you just keep him on PUP. I would assume that he would just – they just plan for him to be there healthy and active or well, know, healthy <laughs> somewhat and healthy and active. Yeah, right? so, exactly. So, but I, I'm saying – it's probably pretty likely he's not ready for week one, but week three, week four, that's probably like the circle like the, when you're targeting a date, right? Yeah, I would say that, I mean, if he's passed a physical at this point, it's really just about getting him up to speed. I don't know how comfortable you're – I mean, I think the thing that's fascinating is, you know, we knew him that he was a high floor player. I mean, that's kind of what we I, I thought of him, and I'm, I think you did too. Uh, but, I mean, he missed all of training camp. I mean, missed yeah. all of it. So it's like all the preseason. He must games, have had a the, really, yeah. yeah. So he must have really had a nice spring because they must feel like not only is he going to be healthy, ready to be the, the, that yeah. six weeks, he's also going to be good enough to either contribute or feel like they need to have him on the roster because otherwise you're kind of wasting a, a roster mechanism here right. unless you think that he's going to contribute in some way. What about Luke Gifford making the team? You know, I mean, I I, lo- I I got my Darian Thompson wish when we lose Luke Gifford, and Thompson probably end up being back and stuff. I don't. It's again, I don't not dislike uh, Thompson. It's just I really have no complaint about him now because all the safeties I wanted also made the team. <laughs> they, they're all on the team. So uh, uh, Luke, you know, it's uh, <laughs> he has a sponsor. He's uh, I don't know if he's going to get any better. He's been good on special teams, so I don't have a problem with him being on the team. It's just like. Okay. Uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see if he makes it. All right, All last right. one. I'm going to put you on the spot before we head out. Any guys that were released on Tuesday that you hope the Cowboys put a waiver claim in for? Oh man, uh, I, I, what's the name of the uh, running back hybrid H back guy, Jalen Samuels? That's a good one. I got a better one though. Uh, who's, ben, who's that? Ben Mason, the fullback that the the I Baltimore see. Ravens I saw play. that. I didn't want to just put in a a, a, a straight fullback claim. I, no, I but he's least, good. Like he, the I, problem is, they is already the, the Ravens already had a all I mean an all pro fullback in Patrick Ricard who also could play defense tackle for them. They had so many draft picks years, this year that they just didn't know what to do with them. So they took a fullback in like the sixth round. He had a heck of a camp in in you know in preseason, but there's just no spots. So. Uh, Why not? I quote tweeted it. I quote tweeted it and I said, "Walk, don't run, Cowboys." <laughs> when when I saw that he got uh, cut, so yeah, I think there's guys out there. Look, the Cowboys put themselves in a spot where they need a third tight end, a third running back, and maybe a fullback. I've seen several good versions of all those guys kind of yep. on the street so far. So the Cowboys are going to have their pickings of the spots they they they're looking. All right, that is it for today's show. Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, you can download the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow the show at Locked On Cowboys. You can follow Landon at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier, and we'll see you next time.